Hi and welcome to my C-Sharp WebDriver video series. This video is the first video in many videos yet to come in which I will go through in detail how to set up a C-Sharp framework and run WebDriver code from it. So what is the importance of C-Sharp and how does it fit into WebDriver? The idea is, like many other languages such as say Java or Ruby, Selenium provides us with the ability to run WebDriver instances for various languages and c -sharp is one of them. So in your workplace you might find one day that you need to use c -sharp, or you can just use this video series as a means of learning two things. The first being how to write code in c -sharp, and the second how to actually write WebDriver code using c -sharp. So the focus of this entire video series will be to write tests using WebDriver written in c -sharp. Now one thing I should point out is this installation of Windows is fresh. I've only just installed it. Nothing too fancy really. I just need a basic OS system. My OS system is a Windows 7 32-bit. So the first thing we actually need in order to run our code is an IDE. And the IDE I have gone with or I will actually install because like I said this is a fresh installation no software installed on it. The only thing that I've installed is Firefox, nothing else. Uh, so taking a step back, the IDE that I'm going to use will be Microsoft Visual Studio Express 2012. And all the links that I navigate to will be provided in the description below. Uh, but when you navigate to this URL, you should navigate to this page. And once on this page, a download should start automatically. If it doesn't, you can easily click here and then choose to download whichever you prefer. The first is basically an installer. Once you download it, it should take mere seconds. It will then, when you run it, go online and start downloading the whole thing. Or you can download an ISO. Me, personally, I've went with ISO. Uh, the download file is larger, but on the plus side, once I've downloaded the whole thing, the installation is usually quicker. So it's down to preferences usually. Now, if you decide to go with ISO, what you will need is basically a tool that will allow you to basically mount this ISO on a virtual drive and then run the ISO off your OS system. Now to do this, you can use something like Damien Tools Lite. Again, this URL will be in the description. All you need to do is just download that and then run your ISO based off that. Now, since I said that I'm going to download the ISO, this is the approach that I'm going to take. So let's do that first. Now, I have already downloaded this to my desktop. If I show you really quickly, and there it is. So what I need to do now is basically download this application that will allow me to basically mount this ISO on a virtual drive. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. So while that's downloading, the other thing you'll need are the c -sharp reference libraries that you will need to provide in your project once you've eventually got it up and running. So you might as well kick off this download as well. Now this can be found on Selenium HQ. Again, this link will be in the description. Just go down and where it says c -sharp, just hit the download button and save it. So once your downloads have completed, what you need to do now, in my case, I've downloaded the ISO. I need to go off and install Damien Tools Lite. So if I just go to my downloads, I have it here. I'm just going to run this and I'm really quickly going to install this. So hit next. Uh, make sure you read this agreement. I have already read it before. Uh, pick whichever license you want. I'm going to go with free. You can hit next here if you don't really care about any of this. Uh, I personally don't want the gadgets, the desktop shortcuts or the start menu shortcuts. File association is fine with me. Next. Uh, I don't want this. <laughs> I don't want this either. Uh, this is where you can set your location. Default is fine. Hit install. Now you may notice that this might start 
installing virtual drivers. If this happens, don't worry about it. Just let it happen. This is expected behavior. Once you reach the screen, just hit the finish button and you're done. So once you're done, you'll see a screen very similar to this. What you now need to do is basically mount the image that you downloaded if you downloaded an ISO. I apologize if you didn't download the ISO and just downloaded the installer. This shouldn't take any longer, really. So anyway, right click on the device, hit mount and locate the ISO that you downloaded. So I downloaded it to my desktop. Just double click that. It'll open up the CD driver. Then run the Express installer. So this is the installer that you actually need to run in order to download uh, Visual Studio Express 2012. So just hit the agree button. Again, make sure you've read the agreement. Um, I don't want to join the customer experience improvement program. Hit install, accept any messages that pop up. And this is where you will need to effectively wait and just let the installer do its thing. Now this could take some time, so in the interest of saving time, I'm just going to pause the video here and just let this install. Right, so it looks like the install has finished. So when you see the screen, just hit the launch button. So it looks like you still might need to do a couple of more things. Just let it finish its setup fully. Okay, fantastic. Now, if we go to our downloads folder, we should have also downloaded by now the c -sharp libraries. So if we just unzip this here, So these libraries will come in handy when we actually start writing some code. So for the moment, all I'm going to do is cut this folder and paste it into my C drive. And in here, I'm just going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it apps. You don't have to do this. It's completely up to you. I just like to store things in an apps folder and paste it in here. So I've got it for easy reference. Okay. And I can now effectively delete this stuff from my downloads folder because I don't need it. Close that. Uh, I can also go ahead and unmount this image because I don't need it. Okay. So now that we have our IDE installed, what we can now do is actually start to write some code. So the code we're going to write is going to be a very basic code. In this video, I'm not going to go into any detail as such as to what the code is doing. But the focus will be to see if we are able to run a really basic proof of concept just to make sure that our environment is somewhat ready to start writing web driver tests. So the first thing I'm going to do is go to file and go new project. And in here, I'm going to select Visual C Sharp console application. And I'm going to give this a name. So I'm just going to call it uh, web driver framework and I'm going to hit the OK button. OK, so as you can notice, it's created a project for us and it's also created a really simple uh, main method to help us get started. So the first thing we need to do is to actually reference the libraries we just downloaded and placed in my case in my apps folder. So to do this, all I need to do is right click on references and say add reference. I need to locate the references. So if I just hit browse. So before you do this, just make sure you're on this browse option here and then browse. And I need to go to my apps folder, selenium.net. And I'm just going to go into net 40. And I'm just going to highlight all of these and just hit add and hit OK. So as a result of doing this, you should now see inside your reference folder a couple of additional references, in particular WebDriver and WebDriver.support. So now that we've actually got our libraries referenced, we can start to actually write code. So for the moment, uh, don't focus on what the code is doing. 
but the focus now should be just to make sure that we can actually get something up and running. What we'll do is create a new instance of the driver. Now in C Sharp, when we want to create an instance of the driver, we use what's called the I Web Driver class. So it's I Web Driver. In fact, before we do this, what we actually need to do is effectively use the namespaces in order for our code to recognize web driver. So to do this, what we're going to say is using openqa.selenium, we also need to use Firefox. So to do this, we're going to say using openqa.selenium. Firefox and now that we've have imported these namespaces we can start to actually write code so now we can actually create our instance of our driver we're going to say I web driver and let's just call this driver and we're going to say this is equal to a new Firefox driver now that we have an instance of driver what we can do is actually call the methods of this driver to help us simulate actions on a browser and in our case it's going to be on Firefox browser so we can say driver dot navigate go to URL and in this case what this will do is basically try and navigate to us to a URL after it's opened the browser so we are going to try and navigate to http forward slash www.testroom.com and close that. And the final thing we're also going to do is just go ahead and uh, quit the driver altogether. So if we now go ahead and hit the start button, what we're expecting is a Firefox browser to open up. It should then navigate to this test site, i.e. the testroom.com, and then close the browser. And that should be it. So let's go ahead and hit the start button. Fantastic. Looks like it worked without any issues. So what have we covered in this video? So this video has been a little light in terms of actually writing code, but we now have an IDE in, in place. We also have libraries in place and we have a really basic, basic piece of code, which proves to us that our environment will now allow us to run web driver code using C sharp. We can now build on this video to start writing much more complex code uh, and more complex frameworks to allow us to effectively end up building a framework from scratch. So that's it for this video folks. Thanks for watching. Hi guys, I really appreciate you watching my videos and if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you already haven't, hit the subscribe button below. Also, follow me on Twitter, Facebook and Google. Links in the description below. Until next time, ciao.